May I? Uh, I guess our audience may be quite interested to see how difficult it is to build such a backlog. So let me just show in our um, in our example here how easy you can build such uh, custom wiki pages. Mm -hmm. So I'll create a new page and maybe let's just call it backlog. And um, well, I think basically what you did was you. Um, You um, entered here a title, some description, I guess, and somewhere in your uh, in your wiki page you embedded work items based on some query. That that was what you just mentioned. So yep. let me just add a query here. Um, maybe type user story, and let let us see what happens. So that's just a simple example here. And we can see that we have now already all the data in our wiki page. So, so you did this multiple times, I guess, and then you just aggregated in a third query. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that seems not to be difficult to do. All right, so uh, let's move on. Now that we have our backlog, the question is, how can we plan it? So uh, we need to pick some of the, the backlog items, some of the user stories, and assign them to a sprint. This can be done just by, I think, just by picking one of them. So let's pick the, our fifth user story. And I can just say this should be, well, we have no estimate here, but I think you can show us some data, hopefully, with, uh, <laughs> with uh, some, some estimates of, from our development. So let's just add two days here. And uh, let's plan it to the next sprint, sprint one, and save it. This is all I have to do to assign um, the user story to Sprint. Is that, is that right? Well, principally, yes. Uh, 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 of course, uh, typically the estimations for the features are uh, um, given in advance. So the corresponding uh, um, uh, so author of, the, of this user story should, should speak to the team uh, how difficult to implement that, because typically the costs to, uh, of implementation makes uh, um, uh, quite big impact on prioritization. Sometimes you see that it's too expensive, or it's simply not clearly defined feature, therefore you want to split it. Mm -hmm. But uh, principally, this is enough for a first phase in the planning of a, a sprint, just to select some user stories and uh, define if it uh, still fits to the capacity of your team. Mm -hmm. More complicated example will be, and what happens in our organization, is that uh, actually different user stories will be implemented by different people. So. In our case, we have some user stories which should be implemented by specific people and not by anybody in our team. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we go to next point uh, the, to split the user story to sub-items. So All right. here you will probably you will explain uh, the part of the, of the template with the different types of work items presented. So tasks, improvements, defects, and so on. Oh, yeah, now that you mention it, I was, I was really wondering why there are so, so tasks below, because I think uh, Scrum has not the concept of tasks in itself. As far as I know, you just plan user stories to in a sprint, or is it basically up to you how uh, you refine yeah, the data? Sh sure, sure. But let, 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 let's uh, uh, take a very simple thing. Uh, to implement some feature, you need to provide a testing. And for testing, you need to reserve capacity of a tester. And, uh, of course, the more testing stuff you, d you, you do during the sprint, the, the more risks you will see that... Uh, there is no available testers. Therefore, of course, splitting user stories to sub-items, particularly to tasks, and uh, um, splitting the time from the feature to the task is also quite important thing. So can you show us that, that yes. in our development? I, I would be really curious to see how I do the planning. Uh, well, let's say a planning planning meeting, maybe. Sure, sure, sure. So let's let's uh, um, uh, let us take a, a, any user story what was selected for the current sprint and uh, uh, I will show how it is uh, uh, broke down so work, work breakdown structure is presented for this user story. So we can see that uh, uh, this user story is planned with initial estimate three days so somebody uh, told that uh, complete implementation of that will take three days. But we split it to three tasks or three sub-items, better to say, and one of them probably belongs to the core implementation, what we can see in the uh, um, uh, tooltip of this uh, subordinated uh, in, 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 uh, improvement, and uh, some belongs to UI. 
All right. So, for example, here there, there will be two teams or two people, two persons involved in the implementation, one of them from persistency, one of them from front-end, and there will be also a QA task assigned to that. Mm -hmm. So it requires us to split. So in UI, you need to reserve some time. In persistence, you need to reserve some time. In documentation, you need to reserve some time. In QA, and so on and so forth. So here it's a game. So sometimes playing, uh, playing poker, sometimes it's a playing game of distribution of work between your team members. Mm -hmm. And where can I see the plan then? I mean, that's... that's Sure, sure, sure. Uh, one of the features of Palarion is uh, when you define some uh, estimates, time spans, uh, whatever planning uh, um, related uh, properties of work items, you can always use the feature called life plan. So I will switch to the uh, life plan view to show you how the, uh, how the tasks are distributed in your team. So here you can see this is the plan for the uh, uh, current sprint. Uh, so this uh, line means the end of, of the sprint. And you can see the tasks which are distributed in your, in your, um, during your planning meeting and uh, probably with some follow-ups. Of course, we should uh, reserve some buffers because there is uh, not only the tasks which are explicitly taken from your plan, there might be some discussions, calls, uh, email processing, and so on and so I forth. See. So let's go back to our demo example, um, um, because I think we have to look a bit at, at the time now. Um, let's go back to the home page of our project, and here we can see um, a sprint board. And I think the sprint board is now, once we did the planning session, we looked at the live plan, um, we can now analyze the, the progress of our sprint. So we have here the, the black line indicates the, the ideal world, and the green line is like, what is the real progress? You can see in my demo data that it's uh, probably not the right, uh, a, a good start, but I hope in your project it looks a, it looks a bit better. We will see. <laughs> and um, well, here you can see the user stories. Um, the status of the user story is indicated by the color. So the yellow color says it's not yet started. And the columns here, in progress, done, verified, um, displays um, the status of each task. So I can see that the second user story um, is already in progress and there is a task to implement the user story. So it's pretty easy for me to understand what's going on in the sprint. Now, I would be curious to see that in our development team. Okay. I want to uh, comment a little bit this uh, feature because uh, uh, if uh, our audience uh, have uh, read or participated in some Scrum trainings, uh, uh, they will definitely know about classical approach with uh, uh, task board. So you have on the wall some stickers with tasks which you can move from left to right, and uh, this actually helps your team to understand uh, how big your progress is. And in Palladium, it's, uh, this table is completely automated. So you see these work items which move from from the column to do to in progress to done and so on according to the workflow stand. So it, the, the tool supports you to do this stickers work automatically. But let me switch to the real world. So here it is an example of a, a sprint board of actual sprint an hour. And you've tweaked it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Not, not, not exactly. So there were, there were some, some questions why, for example, this sprint is uh, typically starts with uh, some, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, uh, bigger or faster progress than uh, one can expect from this black line. The, the reason is very simple, that uh, people start typically with, with uh, easiest uh, tasks, uh, what they have in their personal backlogs, and of course the easier things will be done in the uh, first five minutes maybe. But uh, uh, if you are interested, I could uh, also show you some, well, not, not so nice examples of, uh, of the burn down chart. So, for example, if I switch to the perspective view of, the, uh, um, of this page, um, so, for example, this was a, 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 a bad example, so to say, where actually the uh, sprint result was uh, quite affected by the amount of defects we have found in the implementation. Uh, of the features which were planned for the sprint. Okay, but you, this also tells me that you have historic data available and you can monitor your sprints and improve over sure, time. Sure, sure, sure. That's, okay. That's a traceability thing inside of Polarian. Right. Okay. Thank you, Nick. That was really interesting. Um, let's wrap up. 
As you have seen, uh, the Scrum template allows you to manage your backlog, your product backlog, and uh, you can plan all the user stories in, a, in, a live, in Polarium's live plan. So you will actually see, as soon as you have assigned a user story to a milestone, you will see how your plan is updating. And uh, once you defined your plan, you can monitor the plan with a burn down chart and with a special um, burn down page that we provided for you. So you will always know what's going on in your sprint, not only from a user story perspective, but also all related tasks and related defects. So that was really interesting, Nick. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, get ready for the chat messages. We are here to answer your questions.